this week we're focused on texture. So I know in the notes, one of the things it said is like, I'm, I'm kind of doing, uh, all of my lessons are around observational drawing. So if you have a piece of fruit in your house, I'm just using an apple. That's what I'm going to draw today. Uh, but it could be anything. It could be a piece of fruit. It doesn't have to be a piece of fruit. It could be something else that you have. But um, you need something that's a starting point to draw from. So um, I suggest something super simple. That's why I suggested a piece of fruit, like a banana or an apple, or if you have like a vegetable or even, um, I mean, you can use a toy or a stuffed animal, but um, I, like I said before, it's simpler is better. Like I, if you're going for like a toy, I would use like a single Lego piece, something simple, something that's quick and easier, easier to draw. So simple shapes because the goal today is not necessarily on the shape of the object you're drawing, but on the texture that we are going to um, give it. And welcome, hi Kat. All right, so texture is kind of cool. Actually, let me wait till people get come back because I see a lot of people have, uh, maybe they're, they, they went out to go find something to draw. Um, so I'll give it a second. I want to apologize in advance for all of the construction noise. I don't know if you guys can hear it now. It's, it kind of calmed down, but they're working. I'm at home, obviously, and there's a lot of uh, they're building something next to me. So and just all this noise just started. <laughs> just talking to Scott about it. It's really loud. It's probably louder for me than it is for you, though. Though. So I hope I hope it's not distracting. Hi, welcome. I'm glad some, some new people joined us. I love that cute dog, uh, Lynn, and Lynn Sienna. Oh my gosh, that, that puppy is the, kind of the cutest. <laughs> um, all right, so this whole week is focused on texture. And what is texture in art? Um, we're working on flat pieces of paper. So anything that really has a texture, texture is, ob is this obviously how something feels. So anything that really has a texture um, is not going to come across on paper unless it's called implied texture. So when we're drawing a texture onto a flat piece of paper, it's called implied texture because you are implying that the texture is there. Your texture that you're drawing might look fuzzy, it might look gooey, it might look hairy, um, it might look rough, but in reality, if you were to feel it, it would just be a flat piece of paper. So you are implying the textures there based on the kind of mark making that you are doing. And mark making is just what it sounds, it's the types of marks that you are making on your paper. So um, the tools that I'm using today are going to be just a regular 4B pencil, 4B pencil, regular eraser, and something to draw. But before we do that, um, we're just going to do a really quick, maybe five or 10 minute warm up. I'm going to switch to the uh, camera. So uh, in just a second. So before we, before we start, I want you guys to think about some different types of textures that maybe you could make. So some of the ones that I was thinking about were fuzzy and I said gooey, hairy, scaly, like a dragon or like a lizard smooth, how do you imply smoothness, um, bumpiness, spikiness. So all of these are different types of textures. Um, and today I want you just to, to practice doing a couple um, super simple textures. And normally I, if I, when I taught this class in person, I give you like a sheet that has lots of different circles on it that looks something like this, empty circles. But um, you can just draw in a couple of different circles. And they don't have to be circles, they could be squares. Just draw in on a piece of scrap paper a couple of different spaces to try out some different types of textures just as a warm up. So let me switch to the other camera. Here we go. So you can see that some of the textures that I've already drawn out are gooey, hairy, fuzzy scaly, smooth, bumpy, spiky. So all of these look like these, they're, they're all implied textures and they all look like these things based on the types of marks that I've done. So for some of them, like fuzzy, the kind of marks I was doing was a lot of um, short little uh, thin lines 
using a very um, sharp pencil point to get kind of this kind of fuzzy texture. And some of the lines kind of went outside of the, the circle. Some of them were kind of going in different patterns. That was what I did for fuzzy. For Harry, I started off and I did lots of long lines. And I was also thinking about, because I wanted it to really look like somebody's hair. I did, I started off like where the hair was darker at the top and darker at the bottom, but in the middle, it, um, it kind of looks a little, I did a, a little bit lighter to make it look like it was, um, had like a, a shine to it. Um, gooey, it's literally like the drips that are coming down. Scaly, or just literally some scales coming in there. For smooth, smooth was done just by um, shading. And t uh, value is another element of art that we're gonna talk about uh, in February. So uh, this, this was, I used value by making like a darker area and going from darker to lighter. So I imagine the light source for this smooth ball was kind of coming here. So that's where the light is bouncing off of this. I also added the shadow just for effect, but that would be a smooth, we have bumpy. I have down here, I have some, a spiky ball. So today, and remember I mentioned we were gonna do some observational drawings. Today we're gonna draw a piece of fruit or, or an object from your home, but I want you to totally change the texture of that fruit. So think hairy bananas and um, uh, like scaly apples. So I am going to be using this apple, but um, before I get there, just on your paper, like I said, just we're going to take maybe five minutes just to try out some different types of textures. And if you're having trouble thinking of some good ones, a quick Google search for um, drawn textures helps. You can either you can also literally look around your um, your your house uh, and see if you can find something. Like I'm this is this is my pencil sharpener and I'm literally just looking through it because it's wooden and I'm like oh a wooden texture would kind of be nice. So I'm going to use this to try to do a different type of texture. So but you can always so you can use inspiration from things that are around your house. You can um, always look to see what uh, different types of textures um, are. You can look, uh, do a Google search. It's pretty, it's a lot of different ways. So like I said, I'm gonna try some wood. And wood is kind of like, wood has a, a definite pattern to it. There's like lots of straight little lines that are coming down. So lots of like, and kind of different like ways. Sometimes, sometimes wood, especially if you get like you know, a, a nice slice of wood will have a, um, uh, it'll have like the rings in it. That's how you tell how old a, a piece of a, a tree is. Sometimes wood has knots in it, not, not like just these kind of like round, like circular areas. So maybe I'll add in some of these knots. Oop, I actually have to use my pencil sharpener and sharpen my pencil. <laughs> I'm wondering what you guys, what kind of textures you're coming up with. Does anybody want to share with me what type of textures they, uh, you, uh, you're trying out? You can write it in the chat if you want, or you can, you can uh, unmute yourself and tell me. I'm curious. Diff lots of different types of textures. Hairy, slimy. Feathery, feathery is a good one. A woven Scale. texture. Oh, say that again. A woven texture. Oh, woven is cool. Woven where like the pieces have to like uh, uh, weave, weave in and out like each other like that. Yeah, that's that's cool. That's like a, that's actually kind of a tricky one to do, but that's really cool. I like somebody's doing scales. Yes, here Tiktok's doing scales. Scales are, is always a fun one, especially if you like doing. Um, if you like doing uh, like kind of fantasy creatures, dragons, scales are always, always good. But like I said, it's all about mark making. So you want to kind of, and it does help to really look at something uh, for inspiration. So super helpful to look through and see what like, what things actually look like because I always say this when when I when I'm drawing from from real life from from observation, 
is that you're trying to draw what you see, not what you think you see. Because a lot of times something will look a certain way and you'll, 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 think, you'll think you know. You're like, oh, I know what an apple looks like. I know how to draw that. But the reality of it is if you look, if you drew it, like it might not look exactly like you expected. So it's, you want to draw what you see, not what you think you see, which is kind of tricky to do. And it's easier said than done. So think about changing the value, how dark or how light you do things. Think about the types, like are they thin lines, are they thick lines? Do you need to sharpen your pencil? Try to vary, like a lot of times natural textures are, um, they're very organic and, and organic lines aren't always like in the same place. They're like some are close together, some are further apart. They're not very like even or orderly. So think about, think about that kind of uh, effect. You might want things in it, but if you're doing, if you're drawing something that is man-made, like if you're doing like a woven texture, maybe the lines are very orderly. Maybe the lines are like all in like a nice neat little pattern. Like in fact, I think for the next, my other texture, I just did wood, a wooden. For my other texture, I'm gonna try, uh, maybe I'll try like a brick texture, like a pavement texture. Yeah, I'll try that. So for that one, I'm gonna draw some even lines because pavement is usually, or bricks are usually laid down pretty evenly. Anybody else? What kind, what kind of uh, more scale? You guys, are, Liliana and Heather Rose, you guys are doing scales. Curious what other types of textures uh, people are doing. So I'm gonna do some bricks. Some bricks like this, and then I'll add in some some shading, shading like some shaders later. But to make a really good texture, a lot of it is is about time, patient, having lots of patience, and being um, I like being okay with being kind of meticulous. So that means like going back in and and like adding lots and lots of lines and details because texture is really one of the last things that you're doing when you're doing a drawing. And it's one of the things that really makes, oh boy, here comes the noise. It's one of the things that really makes a picture look complete is by add, really adding in, like the, taking the time to add in the, the details to, to give something an applied texture will make your, your picture look really finished and like professional. Peter says he's attempting leather. Ooh, that, that's a cool one. I like that. That's a really cool one, Tater Todd. I like that a lot. Yeah, like I'm. I, that that Tater Todd. Are you? Do you have a piece of leather that's nearby that you're that you're, you're able to look at? Oh, you got a photo reference? That's cool. Yeah, yeah, you guys can hear the, hear the, the, I don't know what kind of drill, I guess. I'm not sure exactly what, what is causing that noise, but I will say it's very loud. Scott assured me before class that it's not as loud to you guys as it probably is to me. <laughs> So a lot of this is like really like thinking about the shading that you're gonna do. Adding texture takes time. Like it's not it's not an immediate thing to make texture look really nice and really good. It, it takes it takes patience. And it takes it takes time and effort. It's not like drawing a simple drawing. Sometimes you can draw a drawing really quickly, right? Especially if it's a character you, you, you draw or something that you, you, you draw frequently and you know what you're, you're going to draw. That, that, drawing the shape of things can be pretty quick. 
Um, but adding the, the, the details and the texture on top is what can really take up the majority of the time, but also it's also what really makes a picture look stand out. Like I, I've seen um, some amazing drawings. Um, so one of the things I used to do before the pandemic is I was working with a bunch of high school students, helping them get their portfolios, their art portfolios ready for college to apply for different schools or schools that they want to go to. And um, when I was looking through all the portfolios, one of the things that I would notice is that the, the, pe the, the people who spent the most time and really like added in the more, more details to their drawings, I mean, their drawings really stood out. So if you're doing something and you really want it to like look good, then take the time to add the add the textures, take the time to add the details that make it that make your work really stand out. It'll uh, it'll help you in the long run. Anybody else doing another kinds of uh, texture? Curious types of textures. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Evie. So some of the, a lot of times, like when you're applying to certain schools, I know this is true for Orange County School of the Arts. If you've ever applied to an art school like that, um, they will they will specifically state in your portfolio when you're submitting it to um, like they'll still they'll give you like kind of. Um, uh, an idea of how many hours you should be spending on each piece of art. Usually it's like you should like one to two, one to two hours minimum. But in my experience, um, it's actually better to spend, you know, up to three to four hours. I, I always say this to, to people, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot easier to, um, well, let me rephrase this. It's, it's, it's really, really hard to overwork a picture like it's really really hard to overwork a picture but it's really easy to underwork or to like not to make something look under finished not finished you're not complete to underwork i don't know if underwork's a word but it, it if you think that you're like i mean the thing is when if you if you've ever overworked something you know you know immediately you're like yeah i shouldn't have done that last bit like like this, I, I, I went too far, but um, it's really, it's really, really hard to get there. And most people, the tendency for most people is to, to, to underwork things than it is to overwork things. And how do you know if you overwork something until you get to the point where you've overworked something? Like, all right, so here I have brick and like wood, I think this wood texture could be, I think I could use some more shading in here. Yeah, for sure, need, need some shading. All right. So I, I actually challenge each of you to try, try to overwork some of your drawings. Try, try to go so far that you've, you're like, that you're like, oh, I did too much. It's, it's hard, it's actually really, really hard to do too much. much easier to underwork. Adding texture, though it takes time, it, it is worth the effort, for sure. All right, so I'm not gonna spend too much longer on this, because, oh my gosh, it's already 2.50, but does anybody wanna share some of the textures that they've done? Curious, you guys, have it for me. I want to share. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, yeah find it. Ooh, nice. That's awesome. Good observational drawing. Were you really looking at an apple? Were you really looking at an apple when you did that one? Yeah. Ooh, oh, awesome. That looks great. Oh my gosh, so good. 
So, so good. Oh, that one, oh, I love it. That's a good texture. I like the bow on the top. Those are great. Awesome, Nathaniel. Okay, so um, if anybody else wants to share, you're welcome to. Otherwise, I'm going to switch. So I'm actually gonna move this over to the side and I'm going to start with my observational drawing. So mine, like I said, is just an apple and I'm just gonna set it. My, obviously what I'm drawing is gonna look different from what you see because um, I'm looking at it from a different angle than, than you're, you're looking down and I'm looking this way. So it won't look like that, but all right, here it goes. So I'm just gonna I start. I think Tater would like to now. share. Oh yeah, I'd love to see. I just got like kind of a three in one. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. It's like that. I see that I see the um like the the uh what's it called? The um the stitch work. Yeah. I was yeah. trying to do that. Yeah, that's cool. I can really tell. I can tell that you have the stitch work. Thank you. Nice. Alright, so I'm starting when I whenever I whenever I draw something from observation, I mean, you can probably barely see what I'm drawing because now, obviously, I start out pretty sketchy and light. I want really light lines. Um, and I'm actually trying to look at the object more than I am trying to look at my drawing itself. You, your eyes should constantly be darting from your drawing to the object, constantly going back and forth and back and forth. Is this the drawing where we use a different texture? Yes, so, yes. so I, what I'm doing is I'm drawing in my apple. And then I'm gonna, um, instead of giving it like regular apple skin, I'm gonna give it a totally different texture. Exactly. So I'm just drawing this in. I'm gonna put in where the stem, this is kind of like the top part of the apple is gonna go right in here. And I'm sorry if you guys can't see it very well, but it'll all, I'll darken it up for you in a second. So there's the, kind of where the stem is going. Part kind of comes down like this, yeah, like that. And I think this this first time I'm, I'm using I use my eraser quite a lot at the very beginning because I uh, I'm, I'm I'm staying pretty light with my with my lines and I want them to be I want it to be pretty like sketchy. So here's the apple shape that's kind of coming up like this. That's coming down. Oh my gosh, guys, I hope that noise is not bothering you as much as it's bothering me. It's very loud right now. Hopefully it'll be done by next week. So I'm kind of coming around like this, trying to get that exact curve right. I think it comes down a little bit more narrowly. Like that. It's the table here, like that. that, and then it curves back up and around. So it's funny, what's one of the things that really distinguishes an apple from an orange? It's color, right? I mean, obviously it's texture and it's, but it's mostly, mostly if you're just gonna identify a piece of fruit quickly, it's usually the color that is the most, like I, that's the trait that is uh, most easily identifiable in the shadows kind of coming out down here. Um, so it's kind of cool to do a drawing of something where you're not like going to be adding the color and you're really going to be changing the texture. So you kind of really do have to focus on like that shape because really what is the, what is the distinguishing characteristic? It's the, it's the color. So that, Shadows are kind of coming up and around like that. So I think that I'm going to give my apple a, a brick texture because I was just doing that brick. I thought I was kind of having fun with that. So I think I might make a brick apple. So think about what kind of random weird texture you're going to add first before you start. Or maybe not before you start, but, but you should be thinking about which kind of random texture you're going to add. Definitely going to do. Definitely gonna do brick. Cause I think it's weird to have a brick apple. So if I'm gonna do a brick apple, then I kind of want to start to think about like some parallel lines. 
bricks, brick lines are certainly very parallel. So kind of like that. I'll start doing some contour lines. Contour lines are gonna help me give this apple some dimension. So, and they're also gonna help me when I do the brick pattern. There we go. Well, at least that drilling stopped. Okay. So, I'm doing lots of circles around. So the lines are kind of curving around like this. I'm curious, what kind of fruits or objects are you guys drawing? Avocado, they're like shiny insides and a liquid, ooh, a liquid pit. Oh, that's cool. Slimy, drippy jelly fruit. Ooh, I like this, guys. Nice. Yeah, so this, this project is kind of surrealist. So surrealism is like an art style that is all about like dreams and things being kind of weird and uh, surreal. <laughs> so why it's called surrealism. So yeah, uh, this project is kind of kind of all about surreal, like making things look surrealist. So I love I love trying to play with playing with the texture can be like a really interesting way to make something look pretty different. Okay, so actually I'm going to start this line should be a little bit more straight. I'm going to start straightening this, these lines up a little bit. Yeah. So like that. Yeah. A little more straight. Straight on. Anybody, wait, so what kind of fruit or what kind of things are people drawing? Anybody want to share? Sometimes when I'm drawing like a curved line, I'll turn my paper instead of turning my hand because it helps with the uh, getting that line right. So I went from observational drawing and now I'm no longer drawing from observation. Now I'm just like drawing from my imagination. So this is kind of a mix of starting with an observational drawing and then on top of it, adding in a um, something from your imagination. Kind of like that. So I know drawings are always kind of awkward, like in the middle stages, they're always awkward, awkward drawings and that's okay. All drawings go through awkward phases. It will look awesome when you are done. And part of that is adding in texture. So this week is texture. Last week was color. The week before that was shape. The week before that was line. I think next week we have, um, Scott, is it, is it value or form that's next week? Do you know? You might have to look. <laughs> next week is form. Form, awesome. Form. So, I mean, here's the thing is that like the projects that we're doing today and, and pretty much all week or all like all month have been, um, have, have been like, have been using all of these elements of art with, with the exception of color. Like we're not really using color today, but I mean, in just in this drawing, I'm actually using form. I'm using value. I'm going to use texture, obviously. I'm using shape. So even though we might be teaching these projects in like a, uh, or teaching these weeks in like a very like structured way where we're focusing on one each, each week, in reality, we're using all of these elements all the time.
and we're using them all in uh, in tandem. Everybody is having a good week. I hope, uh, has anybody taken um, Ben's class yesterday? Did he have fun, a fun texture project? Scott, what did Ben do last week? Was, or not last week, what did Ben do yesterday? Was it like, uh, was he doing? As I know, I know focusing on texture. I know Daryl, like I said, every, oh, go ahead. It was hair and fur yesterday. Ooh, hair and fur, that's good. Yeah, hair and fur, those are two really good textures. Especially important when you are doing character design, for sure. Hope everybody did some good hair, hair drawings. I had some cool hair to their drawings. Kat says she's doing a woven button, and Ooh. Soleil is draw was drawing an onion and now drawing cherries. Ooh, that's cool. What kind of texture, Soleil, are you going to give those cherries? Are they going to be like... Her eyes are creating like a galaxy type texture. Ooh, galaxy type, what galaxy texture, like like starry. Okay, that's cool. Like Or, or it could be like, like clouds, like nebula, like... Like, uh, like, um, like, like, uh, cosmic dust texture. That's kind of cool. So how do you, how do you do that without color? Curious. Um, right now I'm just doing kind of like the shading with my pencil. Okay. So I do like the darker parts and then the lighter parts. And then I'm going to put like just blank spaces for the start. Mm -hmm. Nice. I would love to see when you're done. Thank you. Love to see that. Yeah. Um, does anybody else uh, have anything else that they're, they want to? You want to share? Obviously, any time. Any anybody's welcome to share at any time. So, like I said before, what we're doing is called implied texture. Wouldn't it be really funny or cool though to actually create a uh, a piece of fruit that had real texture? What if you like? glued hair to a banana. <laughs> what if you, what if you really did make a Lego or an apple out of bricks or a, uh, like a, a cherry out of, out of star, like how, what would, how would, how would you do that? That'd be kind of crazy. Some of the most famous surrealist artists you probably have heard of was Salvador Dali. He's like probably the most famous surrealist. And he had some really cool pieces of art or paintings. He also did like, he was just known for being kind of a wacky dude. Like he had this kind of crazy mustache. It was like one of those like villain twirl, twir twirling type mustaches. And he, I think, I think it was Salvador Dali. I think he would host these like surrealist dinner parties where he'd invite all his surrealist art friends to come and they would serve like really random foods. Like, I don't think he would eat a lot at these surrealist dinner parties. I think it was mainly, you just like wear crazy, crazy costumes and like look at the food is my guess, because I don't know if some, some of the food I don't think was meant to be eaten. Leanna and Heather Rose would like to share. I'd love to see. See, sorry, hold on guys. Whoa, look at that. I like that goopy. I like the slimy, slimy goopy. Are you working on a, um, like a dry erase board? Oh, these are cool. I like the wood, I like the slime. Dry erase boards are like a fun way of uh, drawing things pretty quickly. I like that. The only problem I, always, I have, because I, I when I was in the classroom, I'd have to use dry erase boards a lot, is you can't get a lot of text or you can't get a lot of um, shadows or shading with, with, uh, with um, a dry erase board, unfortunately. You can't, dry erase markers don't do shadows. Like you can't shade with them. 
but they make it's 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 like a nice way to like do a like a quick drawing for like for um for like a sketch because then then also it's, it's like a kind of a time sa or a saver in the sense that you're not wasting paper okay I'm trying to get this shape exactly right I want uh -huh. Okay. Does anybody else want to share? No worries if you don't. Here's Kat. Um, oh, let's see, Kat. So this is what I have so far. Ooh, wait, tell me about this. What what is this texture again? It's um like a woven button. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, like uh, doing things that are woven is kind of tricky because you're like, yeah, you have to like do the overlapping bits. Yeah, I like and okay. yeah, it's getting a little bit confusing. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a little hard to do. Like the, it's, I think it's called lattice, lattice, it's like lattice work. Yeah, I did a little square. I'm starting by like drawing the weave texture in the square uh -huh. and then I'm gonna kind of move out okay. as like you do if you ran out of room on your page uh-huh what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it like it was cut and then sealed over with like a comb like that oh that's cool I like that very cool all right I like that you have a plan you have a plan for doing hard things nice Right. Well, I'm almost done drawing in like the basic outlines of, of this this uh, brick apple, but then I'm nowhere near done because a lot of it is going back and adding the shading, kind of changing these lines to make them look a little bit more organic looking. Yeah, I want it to look a little more organic. the bottom and I love this one this line in the bottom. There we go. So like I said before, even if we started off with like a uh, something that was some um, like an observational drawing, you're really kind of ending up with something that is completely from your imagination. If you were at a surrealist dinner party, what would you serve? Like Unicorn, unicorn stew. <laughs> what would you, what would you like serve? I'm wondering. What would I serve? I guess it depends on what the theme is. Like if, if it was like a weird theme, like you could have like a mystical, a mystical creature, a mystical creature dinner party. It's hard to draw. Yeah, unless you don't paper with you right now. Yeah, no worries. I'm glad that you it's it's good. It's good practice to try to draw on all sort all types of surfaces. Um Heather uh Liliana and Heather Rose. It's good practice. Okay, so I'm just adding in the shadow right now. Deep sea monster. So you'd host, Tater Tot, you'd host a deep sea monster themed dinner party. You'd serve sea cucumber and giant clam. Ooh, that would be a really good one. Oh my gosh. It, and it, like if you, if you were to require costumes, I wonder what type of costumes you would have for your, like, would you dress up as like a giant lobster or <laughs> what would your, what would your, would, would your, would you require costumes? Cause I think, I think I would definitely require costumes at my, at my party for sure. Dragon eye stew, mystical creature. Yeah, that would be really cool. Dragon eye stew. And like, think about what kind of desserts you could do for like a, like a mystical creature party. Under. See, 
<laughs> Ew, so that's gross. Sea cucumbers spew their guts. So yucky. Sea cucumbers are all, they're pretty gross. I, my, my brother growing up used to, used to like to find them, like he would dive for them and he would pick them up and he would definitely like try to get me to hold them. And I was always grossed out by them. They're so, they're so weird and slimy looking. <laughs> Eel. Ooh, that would be cool. You some eel like thing with long flowy coattails. Yes. I, I think that if you're going to a surrealist to uh, dinner party, you have to have, it has to be fancy for sure. Coattails, like top hats, coattails, costumes, <laughs> like wacky, wacky music. For sure. You have to set the scene for your, for your surrealist dinner party. Like you could make it really, really weird. Like all the seats could be like, like toilets or something. I don't know. I'm just thinking of uh, Duchamp as an artist who he did uh, some uh, arts called art called ready mades that basically he took a he took a toilet and he put his, he signed it and uh, and and it's actually in a museum now. It's a ready made piece of sculpture. <laughs> so I don't know, kind of would you have weird seats? Would you would you like with the table, maybe you bolt the table to like the the wall. Maybe like you bolt it to the ceiling. Like if you if you could do any kind of like random wacky thing, like would the entire party be upside down? Would you host an entire party? Oh, for your deep sea deep sea party, would it be underwater? Oh my gosh, maybe it'd be like inside, like at the bottom of a pool, and everybody would have to like have a uh, um, scuba gear. <laughs> How surreal would that be? An entire dinner party where you have to like, like you wouldn't be able to eat anything because you'd have to wear, you'd have to wear a, <laughs> a uh, um, like a, a helmet the whole time. <laughs> Honestly, that would be the worst dinner party ever. <laughs> I think, you know what though? I think it would be the most memorable dinner party ever. <laughs> you would not walk away from it full, that's for sure but you probably would never forget that dinner party. <laughs> All right, so I'm, as, as I've been talking, I'm just kind of adding in the shadows. So when I, when I shade, I tend to like to use the side of my pencil. I like almost hold this hold in the back and I kind of go quickly back and forth and I'm making um, almost all the time when you have a shadow, it's darkest closer to the bottom and then it lightens up as you get farther away from your object. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm into this uh, to your time, into this surrealist dinner party brainstorming exercise for sure. <laughs> I think it'd be really, it'd be so much fun. <laughs> You could, you could go all mad hatter you could like base it on a book you could base it like on a harry potter or like i don't know you could do like a mat a mat like some plants and so dinner party it just has to be wacky like that's that's the one the one requirement the wackier the better <laughs> i remember going to this alice in wonderland theme party that's, that's cool. I think I was very young. <laughs> nice. Alice in Wonderland is a pretty, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty surreal book. Pretty surreal. Okay. So you can see that like, once you start adding in the texture and the, and the, um, and the, the value, so the shading, your picture goes from not looking done at all to all of a sudden looking way more complete. Oh, bye Evie, good to see you. This is on wings of fire. Have everyone wear a dragon themed surf roasted scorpions, ooh, and goat. This is, that's crazy, Dater, Dater Todd, ooh. Oh. Also, roasted camels. Don't Sorry, forget Evie. about roasted camels. Sorry, Evie, I, I I misread you. I was I just glanced up quickly and I I thought I thought you said need to go, like be back or be right back or something. Sorry. Sorry, Evie. You're not leaving. You stay. Stay, Evie. 
Say that again. Um, say that again. Uh, who was it? They just spoke. That was. It was Cat. It was Cat. Yeah, Cat. Say it again, Cat. Saying also tater tots. Don't forget roasted lizards and roasted camel. Ooh, definitely roasted lizard. Like I said, I don't think I don't think people would eat much at a, a dinner party, but the surrealist dinner party. But that would that's not the point. Totally not the point. I think it'd be really cool to like bolt a table and um, and all of the plates and silverware to the ceiling. <laughs> what if everybody showed up for a dinner party and like they couldn't sit down because everything was on the ceiling? <laughs> that, that's what I just put in the chat, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny, Scott. We were thinking alike. Yes, every, yes. Oh, magnetic shoes. I didn't think about magnetic shoes. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> I was cool. just thinking how to get up to the ceiling. <laughs> wow, how would you? Uh, Tater would like to share. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I just, I finished up my avocado. Oh, that's rad. I love the liquid inside. That looks so cool. Thank you. I love it. I love this. I love this. Uh, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I am too. I'm really proud. That's, you should be really proud of that. It's awesome. It looks really, really rad. Um, very cool. Let's see. We have, uh, oh, we still have 13 more minutes. So awesome. Okay. Well, I don't know. I just want to brainstorm more surrealist dinner party ideas. <laughs> Like, what other what other random parties could you have? So yeah, underwater we have mit, like magical creature themed. We have um, uh, on the ceiling. <laughs> what are some other st like t weird weird parties that could happen? I think that there's actually a magazine or a book that Salvador Dali came out that was all about his surrealist parties. Cat would like to share? I'd love to see, see. Um, so <laughs> this is what I have so far. Ooh, that's um, coming along. My woven little um, thing, trying to find. This side is actually, I think the better side because okay. what I'm realizing as I go along mm -hmm. is that um, the more I go, I'm realizing this particular texture is really about getting super pronounced curves. Yeah. So that if I think it's enough curved, I should make it a tad bit more curved. <laughs> it looks good when it's too curved you know? all right yeah yeah sometimes sometimes doing textures that's kind of what it is it's about like emphasizing and almost over emphasizing certain areas for sure that's a smart a smart uh like realization that you had for sure also an idea for a wacky dinner party yeah what's your idea like um, a dragon dinner party where you pretend like you all dress up like dragons from Wings of Fire. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that would be really cool. What would you, what, what food would you serve at a dragon party? Would it be like, everything has to be like fire roasted? <laughs> fire um, roasted vegetables? Um, if you're going by Wings of Fire standards, technically that's not the only dragon tribe, not all tribes. Burn fire, but I think you'd like get some kind of big meat or something, um, uh -huh. and you'd have your um, cooks like decorate it like a human because dragons eat humans, <laughs> but it would naturally be humans. Yeah, like, no, ca no cannibal parties here. No cannibal. <laughs> that's, that's taking things a little too far. <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, but I like it. I like the idea of like dressing your pick your 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 food up to look like you and that's that's pretty creepy. That's pretty creepy. Uh, that would, it's pretty surreal too. I think that would that would be a a dinner party to remember for sure. Uh, oh, I was going back and I was looking through the pictures. 
see if I find, yeah, these surreal dinner parties. Like what if you, you went to share? Oh yeah, I'd love to see. Just trying to find y'all, let's see. Oh wait, you're, you're, you're muted, you're muted. I just, I just tried copying something from a game I like. Oh, nice. I love the, um, you can, I, you, so the, you can, you can tell that the texture of his nose is super shiny just based on like the, uh, the, the reflections and everything yeah. though. Yeah. Awesome. I'm obsessed with the game. It's very good. That's cool. Very cool. Um, all right. So I'm looking through these pictures of the surrealist dinner party and it's just, it's kind of wacky. People, it's like people like dressed up as horses. Somebody is wearing a costume where like you could see all of his insides on the outside. <laughs> like where it's like, you can see their, it's like, like their organs. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so crazy. Oh, chandeliers, like chandelier headpieces. Go so crazy. Salvador Dali would, oh, he's in one of his surrealist dinner parties. He's literally wearing a, a coat and on his coat must be like glued or attached like, like, like 50 glasses, like wine glasses or like goblins that are attached to his coat. How weird is that? <laughs> I love it. I love it. What if you go to, what if, what if like you, the surrealist dinner party that you went to, it was just, the idea was everything was oversized. So like, your like plate was like the size of I don't know of like I don't I don't know how what something to compare it to but like everything was just giant <laughs> like the spoon like your spoon was the size of your like whole hand <laughs> your plate was the size of an exercise ball also a comment on a costume where you could see your insides on the outside sometimes uh -huh. with like toys from and figurines from shows they'll design something like that like half is the character and the other half is the character but it's inside it's skeleton and organs oh cool that's cool cat that's really cool yeah, I love stuff like that. I love, I love this. I love surreal, I like surrealism. I, I think you can get, it's, it's really like all about like being as imaginative as you can and being like really trying to think outside the box. Here's Soleil. Hi Soleil, let's see. Hi, so I did the onion. I did the cherries. The cherries didn't come out as great as I thought it was going to be, but so here's the onion. It's like something pouring Ooh, out. And I then the that. cherries. And Ooh. I just put like a, a random eye for some okay. reason. I like it. I like the eye is like dripping from the pupil. That's crazy. And the onion with the onion skin. Onions are fun to draw because they had all that, that like that extra like dry papery skin on the outside. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. I like it. You have a, a good a good sense of value too. You, I can tell you went real dark in, in areas, which is um, a sign of a of a of a of a, of a finished piece of uh, finished drawing. Thank you. That looks, that looks awesome. Really nicely done. Really nicely done. Um, oh, there are five minutes left. So if anybody wants to share, now is the time. Like. I know that I'm not going to finish my drawing, so that's totally. It, don't worry if you if you don't finish your your things, because especially like I said before, add, when you're adding texture, it, texture takes a really long time, because it's all about those little details. It's not like drawing a quick a quick sketch. Texture is is more about working on it to make something look like way more finished. I'd like to show an idea for. Uh, a party, but my mind is too weird, so you probably wouldn't like it. <laughs> it's okay. No, all ideas are accepted here. We are accepting of all ideas. So if you're, if you want to share, you're welcome to. All right. What if like the entire dinner was done like inside of like a bounce house so like all of the all of your things are bouncing around <laughs> what about um a color-based 
dinner party. Like, all oh. the food one color, and everyone has to wear, like, for example, red. Everyone has to wear, like, red um, clothes or something. And all the food was red, and maybe you even wore red wigs or something. I love it. I love, I love that idea, Kat. That's rad. Like to have like, uh, yeah, a color, like a color of the month dinner, dinner party. I love that. That's a really cool idea. Everything has to be like, that would be, that, that would be like an, a, a much easier one to, one to exit than, uh, for instance, the bounce house party or, an, <laughs> or a ceiling, a ceiling or underwater parlor party. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of other like really random places where you could host a dinner party. Peter designed his outfit for a sea monster dinner party. You did? Oh, let's see. <laughs> so I decided to go with like a hoodie, a suit, <laughs> some swim trunks, and some flippers all at the same time. Oh, that's awesome. I love the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the hood. It would have like teeth and eyeballs and then a little that's, top that's of cool. You know, of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. And the tails would come up, come up like pure yeah. tentacles. I love it. That's awesome. Thank you. Very cool. Very, very cool. <laughs> yeah, you have to like uh like what what about like um what about like a futuristic dinner party? Like dinner party like set in the future with like I don't know, robots and flying cars. Why don't we have our flying cars yet? I'm still, I still love this idea of a, of a party that's literally at the bottom of a, of a, of a wall <laughs> and you bolted the table to the, to the, to the floor of the pool. Okay, well, I know I'm not done yet, but you can start to see how when you when you really add in that those textures, you can really start to like make something look look pretty uh, wacky, or in this case, wacky. But if also you make make something look a lot more finished. So, all right, I hope you guys had fun today. I totally had a lot of fun coming up with these different dinner party ideas. And one of the more fun, uh, like, <laughs> thought experience, experiments. Um, does anybody want to share any final final pictures they would like to show? Love to see if you uh, if you would share. Oh yeah, cat. Let's see. Um. So this is what I have. Obviously, oh. it's not finished yet. Yeah. But, but I'm I, getting closer. But I see what you mean with the curve. It's all about that curve to make the, the thread really look like it's curving up and under and through, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. On the second line right here, uh -huh. I started to realize that a little bit more. Yeah. And so my lines are a little bit better and then straighter around the middle line <laughs> yeah but I love, I, I love the time well two things one i love the time that you're putting into this because it shows that you're really closely paying attention and two i love that you've like learned along in the process of doing this drawing you like learned you learned something about like how things are woven and and how to do that kind of implied texture so that's awesome evie really nice like text, texture can be hard for a lot of people because it's it, it really is very time consuming. Like you have to take your time. You have to, it's all about, um, you know, the details, the small details. 
uh, sorry, Tater Todd, I just saw that you're, oh, you're doing like a, you know, the idea of like a, um, like a murder mystery dinner party. That's a cool one. Or, um, I saw in the chat, I don't remember, I think it was Tater Tot. Someone said an Among Us dinner party would be cool. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I would, wait, Among Us? Is that, a, is that a book or a movie? I don't know that. I feel like I should know that. Oh, it's a game. Okay. I feel like I should know this. I should look this up now. Okay. Yeah, that'd be cool. A dinner party where you just sit at a table and eat. <laughs> Yes, but what do you eat? What do you eat, Liliana Heather Rose? Is it is it something random? Oh, I'll oh okay, I'll have to okay. I'm gonna look it up right now. Among Us. Okay. Oh, I have seen this. I've totally seen this. Okay, I just forgot this is what it was called. Yeah, the art is really cool. The characters are so wacky. <laughs> that would be a pretty kind of, that'd be a cool dinner party idea. I like, or at least like costumes for a dinner party. All right, well, if you guys come up with any more wacky dinner party ideas, you'll have to share them with me next week because I will see you guys all again um, next week. Oh, once again, um, I forgot to mention at the beginning that we are doing donations this month. So if you or your parents would like to donate to help keep our center going and keep coming, if you're enjoying these classes and you want more of them, you can donate. Um, also, we're also offering uh, private lessons. So if you or a friend wants to take a private lesson, then you can always sign up for our private lessons. Um, it can be a, a, a so totally private lesson, or if you and a friend want to go on, it could be semi-private, but that's always a great way to get more, um, more uh, uh, personalized uh, art education. All right. But yes, tell me those dinner party ideas next time if you come up with any wacky ones. I know I'm going to be thinking about this all day. <laughs> all right, guys. It's good to see you all, and I will see you guys all next week. Okay, bye. Bye, and thank you, Lee. Yeah, thank thanks you. Bye. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye.